This continent of Africa must be one. I hear you saying, eh? he says, eh, eh, the borders must be open. The borders must be opened. Because borders are opened for white people. When there is a white person from Mozambique who can't even speak English, you welcome them. When there is a brother from Mozambique into Nelspreet, you call them names. Yet you don't call white people names. There is no Mozambique here. There is no Swaziland here. There is no Lesotho here. There is no Botswana here. Zambia or Namibia. There is no Zimbabwe. There is Africa, the continent of our ancestors. Thank you, Africa. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my dear kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in the continent and to those who are in the diaspora. Uh, when I woke up in the morning, I was uh, uh, moving around and I found uh, these hands. And uh, these hands uh, bring me uh, to the very conference on 1884 to 1885. The way these hands are working together, came together, doing things together. As you see, um, they have soldiers, uh, they have workers, they know how to, um, to organize themselves. So that brings me to think that even the Europeans use uh, maybe technique from these uh, hands uh, and came together and came to conquer Africa. And these are hands are going and conquering other um, insects for food. For food. So uh, that's why I was trying to think to myself that maybe even European learn from this. There's a lesson for us. Also, you know, when you move around this continent, you discover many things. Uh, if you start thinking about the nature of this continent, Find we have uh, mountains, good uh, areas, attractive areas. Find we have rivers like River Nile. We have this what we call a uh, great wind based migration. But there was something to learn from this, and this brings me to borderless continent. You know, this River Nile is the source of River Nile is in Uganda. The water flow to South Sudan, move up to Sudan, move up to Ethiopia, and across Egypt, and the final destination is in the Mediterranean Sea. So this river has no limitation of flowing water, maybe by saying because the source is Uganda. There's no need for this water to move to South Sudan. Even the water in South Sudan, they can't stop here. They move until they reach their destination. The same to beauty. This beauty will be migration, as you see. These animals are very intelligent. They know very well that if they want to have birth, they move from Serengeti in Tanzania to Masai Mara in Kenya, where they get birth, new babies come, new generation come, then after a certain time, they come back to Serengeti. In this area, where at that time, there was a green pasture, they feed their babies. The same the Europeans did, that in, 19, in I mean 1884 to 1885, they use the technique of ants to come together, to unite. Then they come and conquer. So they shift without borders. No one asks them about the visas. No one asks them about the passport. They come and conquer. The way this wind beast migrating from Tanzania to Kenya without being asked for visas, without being asked 
for for passport. And these with with this, they don't know if all these animals, zebras and gazelles, they don't know that maybe they are in Kenya or they're in Tanzania. They know this is their territory. And this is the area where they need to live. And that's what they're doing. That's why you see this great uh, wild beast migration. These wild beasts are not coming south or they're not moving to this area. They know that is their territory. So the same European did. They migrate from here, they come to this area, they conquer the Alps, and then they put borders. You see, as you see these ants, they have, they are moving into laws here. And it means they are putting borders and boundaries. No enemy can come in this, these areas. The same European did to Africa. They divide this continent into these boundaries so that no one can come to interfere them. You see, if it is France here, dominating here, it means this is the area for France. The same to ants, that no other ants can interfere them. So if it is the France, if it is United Kingdom, so they put these borders purposely. The same these ants are doing. But remember these ants are strict, united. The same to France, UK, any other European country. You see? But if liver can flow its water across the continent, more than five countries, so also we need Africans to move from one place to another without being asked for visas. As you see, these ants, are, they have created their own uh, their own uh, strategy to make sure that there is a great flow of food and the requirements so that no one can interfere them. You see? But remember, they consume other kind of ants. They consume other ants. You see? So, even the Europeans did the same technique that they have put these boundaries so that no one can interfere them. But remember, they consume African resources. For Africa to survive, for Africa to have prosperity, we need to remove these borders. For other ants to survive, they need to break these ant borders in order to attack and remove these ants. You see? Those who are living in, uh, who have a privilege to live in rural areas, they know if these uh, ants uh, attack somewhere, all insects land away. All insects land away. The same what European did to Africa. And that's why sometimes you see the countries such as America, they use eagle. They use the characters of animals, insects, or sometimes birds. So what I want to say here is that borderless Africa is possible. I'm trying to learn from these natures in order to express my concept that in order for we Africans to succeed, not to be consumed by ants like insects, we need to break these borders. We need to remove these borders. The way wild beasts are migrating from one place to another to fulfill their fulfillment of their requirements, we need also Africans to be free. If you find maybe in this area, people have technology, maybe people have technology, but how can this technology benefit other people in this area. We need to allow people to move from this area to this area. We need to allow people also to migrate from this area to this area. 
Africa, we have resources. Africa, we have minerals. But these minerals have been transferred by ants. And you see how ants are protecting their resources. They have put soldiers alongside the way so that no one can touch them. They have mission, but insects are being consumed. Africa, we need to wake up. It is maybe hard to understand what I'm saying here, but what I want to express is we need borders Africa. We need to break this, all these are boundaries to form a borderless Africa. In order for Africa to be strong, to be respected, we need to come together. If water or labor is uniting us, what's wrong for us to break these, if water breaking these uh, borders, what's wrong for us, the human being who are intelligent? We fear to break these borders. If we breaks these borders, move from one country to another without being asked before visas. What make us difficult to break these borders, to allow people to move from one place to another? You know, what I, I understand from these borders, when these hands came to a certain area, they, they moved like this. You see? They move like this in order to protect everything that they are here to be consumed. If insects are found here, they move like this. They are not moving like this. These are just transparent after getting insects or after getting food. So they, after getting the food, they transfer their food into straight line like this. But when they attack, they alarm so that these are borders. Africans who are here are supposed to be to remain in this area. And these borders drawn to protect the interests of others, to make sure that those who are inside should not run away. They must be taken whether to go to farms or taken to be cheap laborers. That's the main reason. So if you allow these people to move free, they can run away. They can move to other area. If these people, they are poor, they are weak, if they land to the strong, strong areas, they can learn from the strong areas. They, so it means they brave attitude will be transferred from one community or from one place to another. You see? But if you keep these people into small area, even the way of thinking, it will become weak. And that's why you find everything in the continent of Africa is so weak. Africans, we are not performing well in football, internationally, but you find Africans who have been taken from here, training for European nations, training very well. Africans were not good technologically. But you find Africans who taken away from this continent are those who are innovating to other places. Africa, we are not doing good in games and sports like the Olympic, but you find African, black people who are taken from here are those who are doing well in Europe, in America. You see? But here in the continent, we are not doing much better. Why? Because of these borders. So we cannot interact, we cannot share. Even marriage is among ourselves. But I'm sure if Africa is borderless, we can cross. If you have a one wife from this area, you can migrate from this, this. So we can we can exchange, we can exchange. And this can make Africa a superpower. 
Africa can become a superpower. But no one wants Africa to be a superpower because they know the day Africa will become a superpower, this line will be broken. You see? Recently, we read about the issue of uh, America supporting Africa to have the permanent seat, two permanent seats in the UN Security Council. It was a great idea. But let us ask why now America has decided to support Africa. It is good, maybe it's the right time according to the demand of the world. But let us ask ourselves why America now is pushing to support Africa to have two permanent seats. And remember, now we are in the geopolitical and scrap of Africa. You see, Russia is here, China, and the other uh, competitors of the US. So, US is trying to use Africa and to tell Africa that I'm, I'm supporting you on this in order to increase influence to Africa. But the, those two permanent seats with no veto, without a veto, a veto power, it means you have no power. You have two power in six, but you don't have veto power. So it is useless. It is useless. But if we are so united as Africa, you can say, my friend America, my friend Russia, my friend China, remain with your seats. We will remain in our continent. We will do our things here in the continent of Africa. If you want to engage with us, this is our requirements. We need this and this and this. And from there, Africa will be respected. We don't need support from anyone. We don't need who supported the America to have those two permanent to have a permanent seat in the UN Security Council. Who supported Russia? It's because of power. If you have power, people will welcome you. If you are weak, no one cares about you. And you cannot be strong if you are divided. You cannot be strong if you are not united. In order for us to unite, to be strong and to be respected, we need to unite. And to unite means to remove these borders, to have borderless Africa. The continent with almost 54 countries, no any country own nuclear power. How can we respect it? And everyone is coming to anti here. We are anti impressed. Everyone is talking about Africa. Africa this France, France, like something like, like that. So we need to learn from the nature. We need to think on how we can change things on the continent of Africa. So, my dear kings and queens, those are just my thinking. You know, sometimes when you find the press, you keep silence, you look on the nature, there's something that you learn. Maybe you learn negative, and sometimes maybe positive. It depends your determination, it depends your uh, transitions, but all in all, I'm trying to learn from what I see. I'm trying to interpret the environment from what I see and put into Africa. And what I see, what I'm trying to interpret, what I'm trying to understand, that's what I'm doing here. So kings and queens, maybe I'm confusing, I'm not doing well, but what I'm, I'm, I'm just doing here is to share my perspective, my experience. Thank you. So, kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, from what I see, from what I touch, from what I sense, that's what I interpret. So, when sometimes you sit down alone, hearing the sounds of birds, of insects, the winds blowing, rain coming down, the sun shining, you get something. You get something. And that's what brings me here uh, to talk about borderless Africa. So according to what I see on the nature, I feel and uh, the way I interpret things and I, I try to put into this concept. But 
uh, always I'm saying uh, we are here, we come together to share our thoughts, to think beyond. I'm trying to think beyond. Maybe I'm wrong, I'm thinking in a negative way, or sometimes positive, it, de it depends on how um, the way you, you think about me. But all in all, what I'm trying to think is this, that the nature has taught us, the nature has taught me to think that there is a need for Africa to learn from the nature, to learn from uh, uh, the environment that we need to come together. And if we come together, because I believe before uh, coming of Europeans, Africa looks like this. We don't have borders, we don't have countries' names. These names came later after colonization. But I'm trying to move back uh, with Africa at the beginning. So that's why I'm trying to share this. Uh, so kings and queens, I know you have many things. Please share with us what is your perspective, what is your opinion, what do you think. But all in all, the aim is one, to unite Africa, to unite the people of Africa.